Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and we are at the TM Forum's Digital Transformation World and I'm talking with Benedict Enwani who is Director of Business Development Expo. Hello Benedict, thanks for talking to us. Let's start with a pretty obvious question. Why is it so difficult for CSPs to diagnose and then to troubleshoot problems in their network? I guess there's, there's probably two reasons. Uh, the first is it's really hard to understand the network because you know it's a multi-domain thing. There are lots of different silos and they need to be brought together. Um, it's hard to traditionally integrate silos like that, and and then to keep it integrated. You know, networks are run by people. Uh, networks change, incidents happen. So so keeping state in the network and keep and stitching up in the first place is difficult. And the second thing that's hard is that it's hard to know that something's wrong. Um, and the reason for that is that there are, you know, there's layer one to layer seven in the network hierarchy. You have different strategies for measuring performance or test across all those layers. And, and there isn't really, there aren't that many uh, providers that have put all of, the, all of that data into one system. And then to troubleshoot that something's wrong, you've got to take those two uncorrelated sources and put them together. So, so that, that's a big challenge. So why is the process so inefficient at the moment? Right, well, that, that's the easy answer to that one. Um, you know, we, 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 we know that manually drawing topologies of a network is, is, a, is, is a bit of a waste of point, is a pointless waste of time. Um, but the, the big transformations that have tried to uh, document and re-document big networks have had mixed results over the years. So there's still a whole lot of manual traversing of networks in order to figure out what's connected to it. Now, th that builds inefficiencies. In, in addition, you know, there are also you know, very few systems that support the creation and the amalgamation of KPIs across the entire solution. So when people want to uh, correlate the, the network to the, the network's performance, that's also highly manual. And, and putting that sort of information together isn't what people are really good at. Right? So, so that's going to take a long time. Okay then, how will automation make network problems easier to detect? Uh, you know, there's good news. And, and, and the good news is that the, the technical solution to the problem of putting all those data together is now all those pieces are there. Okay. So, you know, we have um, recent advance, advances in, in uh, uh, graph databases uh, that Facebook use and we use. Um, we have no SQL graph stores, uh, which mean that bringing data together is, is a lot easier. We have uh, big data. It's the norm rather than the exception now to if you're pulling a lot of information together to have a big data architecture. That, that, didn't, that wasn't there a few years ago. Um, there are semantic rule engines to understand structural information. And of course, a hot topic, there is machine learning. So, so those pieces are in place now, and, and that means that, that you know, automation could be done. All right. Now, now, now. Then, the question is, how will automation make it easier to detect? Well, if you if you bring those tools together in a platform, and and then you know, then you have enough sensory data to understand the now understood network dependencies. You put that in an automated control loop, just keeps happening, and rather than than you know trying to discover problems, you have the possibly quite good outcome of discovering causes. So, so, so that means you know, we can advance the state of the art and, and, and take down the amount of information presented to people rather than presenting them a list of 50 sites that have gone down, present them with a list of five possible root causes for those 50 sites going down. And that's, a, that's an order of magnitude improvement in the information people just have to process. How is Expo incorporating automation into its platform roadmap? Well, we, we have a, what we've called our Blueprint 2.0 strategy, and that's, that, that's been made on the back of acquisitions that Expo has completed. And you know, most recently with, with Estelia, which is why you know, behind me you see Expo Estelia, uh, a year before my own company, Ontology, being acquired by Expo. And, and what we have decided to do, and the first version of it we're, we're launching really here today, is to build a DevOps-friendly platform, which is specifically for the automation of test, uh, service assurance, and troubleshooting. And that hasn't existed before. 
and 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 we're incorporating that into our strategy so that so that customers so that CSPs so that operators have the ability to roll out a continuous stream of OPEX saving automations on top of their infrastructures. Finally, why should service providers invest in automation tools? So um, when it comes to automation, you know, the bottom line is uh, that there's a carrot. And <laughs> two bottom lines. And, and the carrot is, you know, obvious lowering of OPEX, right? uh, which is the point of automation, to, to automatically do things that, that, that were being done through OPEX activities, through, through, through people before. And, and, it's, and, and there's a good reason for that, because it's hard to see how, how um, uh, manually configured service assurance and manual troubleshooting will keep up with the increase in both the scale and the speed of provisioning that is the goal of NFV and 5G. There's a need to service uh, more users that will come on stream as, as a consequence of the transformations that we're doing in 5G and, and, and NFV. But, but you know, uh, NFV and virtualization also obscures the relationships between the infrastructure and the service. And that means that it's going to become even harder to troubleshoot networks without using automation. Uh, it's going to be more difficult because there isn't the obvious relationship between you know, a device and flashing lights and whether, and, and whether something's working or not. So, so I think if we, if we don't uh, uh, improve automation in the face of virtualization, then the task of troubleshooting becomes more difficult. Benedict Zenwani, thank you. Ah, well, thank you.